What's up guys? Welcome back to see you out there. Welcome back to another Wednesday video. Welcome back to another how-to video guys. This is a very popular subject in Texas right now and all along the Gulf Coast. The big thing happening right now, the flounder run. Flounder are getting ready to spawn. They're moving offshore to get ready for that winter spawn. And now is the best time of the year to target your PB flounder and the most flounder. Here on the Texas coast, guys, we're running out of time. There's some new regulations that are going to restrict the harvest of flounder this year. We'll talk about that in the video as well. So we're going to talk about a couple ways to rig them, where to target them, and what to use for them. We're going to try to put you on your best flounder season yet. Uh, also, guys, we've got a lot of new subscribers that have joined the channel in the last couple days, last few weeks. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you having here. We're very excited to have you on board. A little, little catch up of what we do here on the channel is we do two videos a week. On Wednesdays, we do a how-to, we do a tackle review, or we do an instructional style video where we give you our opinion on uh, a fishing technique or style or a fishing product that we use regularly. On Sundays are fishing videos. So we get two a week, guys. Um, we take a lot of information from you guys, suggestions from you guys, and we make videos based on what it is that you want to see. And on our community page on YouTube, we'll put a lot of polls up asking you what instructional video you want to see on Wednesdays. So keep an eye on the community page, guys, and keep a lookout for Wednesday instructionals and Sunday fishing videos. And uh, we're very glad to have you on board, and thank you, everyone, for all the support. So let's go ahead and get started on today's how-to video, Flounder Fishing 101, y'all. Guys, all right, what's up? Welcome to the computer room. Let's talk about flounder fishing. Let's dig into this a little bit in the fall season, guys. So fall season fishing for flounder is a whole lot different than summer fishing. They even call them summer flounder and fall flounder. What we're gonna discuss is fall fishing for flounder when they're starting to make their way offshore for spawning. So what's happening this time of the year and why are the flounder on the move? In the early fall, or late fall, early winter, flounder move offshore, 60 to 200 foot of water and they spawn during the winter months. So all the fish, females and males right now, are all making their way from their back bayou, their back marsh, their back creek, their normal summer homes where they live, and they're all headed offshore for a major spawning event. That's why right now is the single greatest time to target flounder, because they're all moving to one point. If you look at a place like Galveston Bay or a Scambia Bay in Pensacola, or any waterway that has a natural or a man-made pass. In Galveston here particularly, we have two places. We have the main pass at the Galveston Jetties, and we have San Luis Pass on the west end of West Bay. That's the only two ways all of our flounder from Trinity River, through Trinity, through East Bay, all the way through Clear Lake, Moses Lake, all the way down into West Bay, Greens, Caronqua, and Chocolate, all the flounder in the bay that have to move offshore to spawn have to go through those two points. So what you've done essentially is you've taken the entire bay system and created choke points. All of these fish are moving offshore. All these fish know that they have to feed in route to offshore to prepare for a spawning event where they'll spawn multiple times. It's not one single spawning event, it's multiple throughout the course of the winter. So these fish have to feed to prepare for the winter they have to feed to prepare for the spawning event, and they have to feed to fuel themselves to travel from Trinity River all the way out the pass through the jetties to 60 to 200 foot of water to spawn. So these fish are eating, and they're traveling long distances, and they're all going to the same place. This is why flounder are so easy to target right now. If you find a choke point 
where a large base system chokes down to a small area and that's the only way to get to San Luis Pass or the Galveston Jetties or Scambia Bay going out Pensacola Pass. Same over in Destin if you're coming out of Choctahatchee Bay out through the Destin Jetties. This is a choke point. Every fish in the Northern Gulf is doing the same thing at the same time. So that is why it's so easy for us to focus on these fish this time of the year. The tough part about this and the part we're having trouble with here in Texas this year is last year they took our limits of whatever we were getting per person. November and December during the spawns, they reduced the amount of thunder we could keep to two apiece. There was a lot of issues with this. There was a lot of trouble. There was a lot of uh, flashback on it. It seemed like it worked. Everyone was able to go out and get their two flounder quite easily. Not a big deal. It wasn't that difficult. They increased the size limit from 14 inches to five inches. So in Texas, it's a 15 inch minimum limit year round. And there in November, December, we went down to two apiece. They should have done something different. And there's a lot of snapback on this. They've taken flounder away from us for the entire month of November and two weeks of December. So from November 1st through December 15th, through those key month of November of those flounder all moving offshore, they're now off limits for us to keep. I know there's a lot of anger about this. There's a lot of madness about this. And there's a lot of people really mad. This is the time of year they look forward to, to stock their freezers with fish. It's easy to catch flounder this time of the year from docks and piers and seawalls um, and rock pilings and jetties. You don't necessarily need a boat. You don't expect necessarily need expensive gear or equipment to get to them. I have to, I have to think that the reason the scientists are doing this is to protect our flounder population and to keep them there for us for generations to come so that our kids and our grandkids can enjoy this fishery. I know there's a lot of politics and drama around it. I don't know that uh, Corey and I are for it or against it, but we have to stand behind you know, the officials making this call and hope they're making the right call to protect our resource. I don't want to get too far into that. Um, there's two sides on that that are both heavily, heavily uh, argued and, and Corey and I we kind of keep things positive and we kind of hope that everybody's doing the right thing for the right reason. So we won't go down that rabbit hole, but we will discuss more about targeting. So I know this video will fall on deaf ears this year because during November, December, during the run, during the peak, you won't be able to target these fish. But if you want to go out and fish them for fun and you want to have some fun catch and release with your family and you want to have potentially the opportunity to put your PB flounder in the boat, we're going to get you there, guys. So let's talk about now different ways and different techniques to target flounder in the fall months. All right guys, first things first, let's talk about where to look for flounder. Let's look for locations. Uh, I can't go on the map, I can't show you locations. I don't wanna make anybody mad by giving away secret spots, but I will tell you what to look for. Like we talked about, look for choke points. Look for areas that bottle the bay down, that bottleneck it down and take this giant bay system and narrow it down to a point that leads to one of our passes or your pass, whether that be anywhere on the Gulf Coast, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. Look at your bay system. Look at the only ways that those fish have to get into the Gulf of Mexico and then start looking for choke points. Start looking for things that narrow down. Start looking for large structure. Start looking for seawalls. Start looking for bulkheads. Start looking for shipping channels. Start looking for shorelines with a deep slope that transition from shallow to deep quickly. Start looking for these areas on your map and you're going to find where the fish are. I can't give everyone an all-in-one answer across the whole Gulf Coast, go to this spot, put a bull minnow on and throw it right here and go catch them. But I guarantee you this time of the year, if you put a little time in and study your map a little bit, you'll find where the flounder are. Bottlenecks and structure, man-made structure or artificial structure or natural structure, it doesn't matter. The fish have to feed, the fish have to travel from the back bays. If you've got a back bay marsh system that's 500 acres of marsh and it runs out one little ditch that feeds out into the bay, that's where those fish all have to come through that. That choke point may be 50 miles away from the pass. Your pass, let's say in Louis or Galveston here at home, they all have to come out of that back bay system, they all have to come out of that marsh, they have to flow through that. The intercoastal waterway. Those fish get in there and they travel towards the pass. It all leads towards the Gulf. You find a choke point around an industrial area that narrows the body of water down and makes it smaller. That's where those fish are going to stack up on their way out. 
That's the first thing you want to look for, guys, is trying to find the area. You're not focusing on shell. You're not focusing as much on mud or docks or sand or, or any kind of an oyster shell. These fish are traveling. They're not staging on these things. They're moving offshore and they're finding areas to sit and to feed. And you find those areas where they stage to rest and to feed before they move on, you're going to find the fish. The ways you want to target these fish, guys, there are a few very, very, very popular ones. There are a few that are very successful. We're going to talk about artificials first. First thing with artificials, we all know, is a paddle tail. This is a JRZ purple and chartreuse on a quarter ounce jig head. One thing I will tell you about fishing artificials this time of the year and fishing for flounder is increase that jig head size. This is a salty heads jig head quarter ounce. I would not throw a quarter ounce for flounder this time of the year unless I was in a foot of water. You're going to fish heavier 3 8 5 8 You want to fish a heavier jig head. And the reason being is you want that lure to stay on or near the bottom. With a quarter ounce or a 16th ounce or an 8th ounce, we all know we have a tendency to keep it working a little bit fast, especially in 5 to 10 foot of water, and we're this far off the bottom. We need to stay in contact with the bottom. As we all know, flounder are light on one side, dark on the other side, both eyes situated on top. They're laying on the bottom in the mud or in the shell and the sand, and they're waiting for something to bounce by overhead. They're not gonna swim five, six feet up to attack a bait. It needs to be down there by them. So increase your jig head weight when you're fishing for flounder from what you normally would. Don't worry, it feels uncomfortable, it feels heavy, it doesn't feel natural, it doesn't feel sexy using that heavier weight. Increase that jig head size. If you normally throw a 16th or a quarter, go up to a 3 8 go up to a half ounce. Try it for a little bit, try to make it work. This is a great, great, great lure here. This JRZ paddle tail is a beautiful lure. Um, get something with a little bit of motion. Gulp is the most popular thing in the world this time of the year. The 3 inch shrimp, pearl and chartreuse on a 3 8 jig head this time of the year. Amazing, it's a great lure, guys. Give soft plastics a try. If you're live baiting, take your live bait, put it out the back. We're gonna talk about a few live bait rigs. Have one of these rigged up and throw this lure while you're waiting on the bite. So with artificials, there's another way and it's called a tandem rig. You guys have probably seen them. You can pre-buy tandem rigs where it's two small bucktail jigs on one line. It's an easy, easy, easy lure to tie, guys. You can, uh, we'll, we'll do a video later on tandem rig. Matter of fact, we'll do it next Wednesday. We'll do how to tie the tandem rig so that you guys have got that information. A tandem rig puts two lures back to back. And what that does when you're bouncing it, you've got six to 18 inches between your rigs. And what it does is the flounder misses this one, the front one, well then this one passes by and he'll jump on it. A lot of very good flounder fishing will throw a tandem rig. You guys tune in next Wednesday and I'll do a video on how to tie the tandem rig for flounder. Another thing with artificials guys and something to keep in mind is the bite's not like a redfish. The bite's not like a trout. The bite is not a strong bite. You hear flounder fishermen always talk about the thump, feeling the thump. Well that's what'll happen is you'll set that down and you'll feel a thump. But that flounder is not swimming off with it. He's not moving off at a high rate of speed. A lot of good, good flounder fishermen can indicate that thump, can take that slack up slowly and lift the rod tip. If that rod tip feels heavy and it feels like something's there, drop the rod tip, take up your slack, put the hook to him if you're throwing a jig head. But remember, a lot of people miss flounder bites because they're moving the lure too fast or they're not keeping their artificial, their jig, close to the bottom and they're not identifying that thump. It's a solid thump, you can't miss it. You're bouncing that lure along, it's on the bottom, bounce it slowly along the bottom. We're working our jig very slowly, we're fishing for flounder, it's not that big impact bite like a redfish. Then you feel a boom, you feel it. Nobody's got it, nobody's running with it, I don't feel it, what's going on? Don't pop the lure, don't move the lure really aggressively. Slowly, slowly drop that rod tip and take your slack up. When your slack is up, lift the rod tip. You'll feel that slack and you'll feel that flounder there. As soon as you feel that dead weight on there, he's processing that bait. He's getting it back in that gullet to swallow it. Put the heat to him right then. Crank down and bust him. You got him. But learn to pick up that delicate thump of a flounder. Same thing with live bait. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But just remember, if you're throwing artificial, slow it down. Slow it down. If you think you're going slow enough, go slower. 
especially in deep water. A lot of guys over towards the uh, jetties are smoking these flounder down already. Right now it's the second week of October and there's already guys crushing limits every day on artificial. 10, 12, 15, 20 foot of water. Slow that lure down guys. Keep it in contact with the bottom. Put a live bait out on a rod, let it sit with a circle hook and take that jig, cover some water and get out there guys. And you'll find out that paddle tails, gulps, JRZ, 3JDs, hooked up baits, these are all fantastic ways to catch fall flounder. So now let's transition out of our artificials. Let's move over into live bait. And I'm gonna show you how to tie a very convenient rig. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple rigs that we've covered in other videos, but I'm gonna show you a cool rig here, explain live bait fishing and what live bait to use, and uh, we'll get into it from there. All right guys, let's talk live baiting and live bait rigs for flounder. First off, let's talk bait. We've all caught flounder on live shrimp. It works all day long. Shrimp's a good option. For my money, I'm going with fin fish for flounder. By fin fish, I mean bull minnows. I think they're called mud minnows here in Texas, or finger mullet. Finger mullet and mud minnows are the jam, guys. If you can't get them, shrimp will work in a pinch. But I'm telling you, if you can get your hands on some live finger mullet, some live bull minnows, five foot cast net, walk around the shorelines and the marsh, guys, they're easy to find. You can probably cast net a couple dozen of them on your way to wherever you're fishing, the jetties, the dike, Seawolf Park, uh, wherever you're going, you can get them quite easily, guys. Finger mullet and bull minnows, super, super, super easy to gather. All the live bait shops have them. This time of the year, they're gonna make sure they got plenty for you guys. But live bait, my money is gonna be a finger mullet, a bull minnow, and then I'm gonna go down to that live shrimp. Live shrimp will get it done, don't get me wrong but I would prefer to have that bull minnow or that finger mullet if I'm doing it. Rigging for flounder with live bait. In previous videos, if you go back and look at our how to rig for redfish videos, you'll find our, our how to fish live shrimp videos, another good one. How to rig, you'll find the Carolina rig. And the Carolina rig is simply a leader down to a hook, a swivel, and then the weights above that Carolina rig. The weights above the swivel, above the leader. Take that out there, chunk it out, put it on the bottom, guys and slowly, slowly, you can drag that Carolina rig back to you. And what happens is that weight is up above it and it's slowly staying in touch with the bottom and it's bringing that bull minnow, that finger mullet, that live shrimp, it's bringing that back to you and covering ground. You can take it this time of the year, throw it out there and leave it, let it sit. It's quite all right, it'll get the job done and a flounder will find it. Same thing with the Carolina rig, I prefer a circle hook. This is a little three-aught Mutu Light owner that I throw for everything. Um, some guys prefer kale hooks. Some guys prefer treble hooks. Some guys prefer long chain J hooks. I'm a circle hook guy. Um, I think it eliminates my mistakes. And what I like about a circle hook, what we talked about with the jigs, is you reel down, you feel that slack, you felt the thump, and you lift up, and you feel that weight. Well, with a standard J hook, now I've got to set the hook. With a circle hook, I don't have to. I feel that weight, all I gotta do is lift that fish. Just lift him up off the bottom and that's gonna set the hook for me and I don't take an opportunity to set the hook too hard and break that fish off or to pull that hook out of the fish's mouth by setting the hook too hard. All I do is I reel down and then I just lift that fish up off the bottom. The weight of the fish and you lifting him off the bottom, that circle hook will find its way home and it'll set in the corner of the mouth and you'll get him in. So I'm a circle hook guy. Doesn't mean you guys have to use them. Doesn't mean it's the only way. That's just something that I've learned over the years guiding that I prefer and I lose less fish. Uh, I get a little bit too excited and I'll roll in Martin, set the hook and I'll break fish off left and right or I'll miss them. That's my technique. So another way we're gonna talk about guys, I'm gonna show you how to tie this rig real quick. It's called a dropper loop. If you've ever been offshore and you've ever been on a charter boat and you've ever been two hook rigging, and you fish two hook rigs, back home we call them chicken rigs. The weight's on the bottom, you got two hooks up the leader, you put two pieces of squid on it, and you drop that straight down to the bottom, and you wait and you catch your vermilion snapper, your mingos, your grunts, and you bring them up. Well, we call that a chicken rig back home. And what we're gonna show you is a chicken rig with a single loop. It's just a dropper loop. Weight on the bottom, a loop with a weight on or a lure on it, and then back to our main line. It's very simple to tie, guys. There are some very difficult ways to tie this. I'm gonna show you the easiest way in the world. 
Some of you purists may not agree with how I tie this, but I'm telling you, I've tied this simple means for almost two decades on charter boats, and I never, ever, ever lost a giant grouper or a giant snapper or a giant uh, trigger fish or anything, a giant amberjack because of this knot. So I hope you try it. I think you're going to like it. You're going to find it very, very easy, guys. So what I've got here is a long piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. I use 40 so that you can see it. Um, during the spawn, you can probably get away with 40 pound leader for flounder. I'm going to be throwing 20 myself, but this time of the year, a good piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon will get you there, no problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this three piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon and we're going to tie it from the bottom up. We're going to tie where the weight goes first, where our hook goes, and then back up to our swivel. First thing you want to do, guys, is you want to take your line on the bottom and you want to double it over. We're just doubling it over and pinching it. And then all we're going to do is we're going to make two loops. We make two loops and we take our loop and run it back through it from back to front. And then all we're going to do is pull that tight. Just a simple double overhand knot. I'm a firm believer in always trimming your tag lines real well. Never tag them all the way flush. Always give yourself just a little bit of line. So guys, what we have now is we have our long piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon and we have a double overhand loop. That knot is strong. That's not going anywhere. It's not slipping. And the reason we tie a loop is because whatever weight you're going to use, whether you're using a bank, a pyramid, a whatever you're using, one of those spider looking anchor weights, all you got to do guys is take your pyramid. It's just a little one ounce pyramid weight. You double the line, you run it through there, around the bottom, weight's on. I didn't have to tie anything. I didn't have to do anything crazy. If we're out there and the weight's not holding and I need to go to a three ounce, all I got to do is remove that loop and it's off and I can add more weight or I can add less weight. It's an easy, easy method. Pinch the line through the eye, around the weight, cinch it up, guys. That is as easy as you'll ever have a way to put a weight on the line. So now we got a weight. We got a long piece of 40 pound fluorocarbon. We need a place to put our hook. So we're going to do the same exact thing, guys. We're going to take and double the line over. I want, I want about a foot, 10 inches from my hook to my weight. So my weight doesn't, my hook doesn't get down here into my weight. So I'm pretty happy with that distance. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my main line and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make two, two loops back to front and I'm going to pull that tight. Grab my main line and I'm going to tighten that. There is no slip in that. That thing is there. So now I have a loop. I have a loop that stands out from my main line that stands out laterally uh, off of it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to tie one more little loop in here, same way. And the only reason I'm tying this second little overhand knot in here, and this is something I believe in. This isn't something you have to do. But what I have found is that second little overhand makes that line stiffer and makes that line stand out a little more. If you notice before I tied that knot, it was kind of saggy. Now you look and when that main line is tight, that line is straight out. And that's what I want. I want it to stick out to the side. And now I've got the same thing. I can do one of two things here. This is where it gets interesting. If I'm live bait fishing, I can take my three aught and move two light on her hook and I can do the same exact thing. I can thread it through the hook, nice and easy. I go over my hook and I pull it tight. And now I have got a dropper loop with a circle hook on it. The reason this works so well, guys, is we all know flounder on the bottom. If you're fishing in a softer mud or you're fishing on a steep slope and you can't get your, your uh, Carolina rig to sit right, you can throw this out there and let this sit on the bottom and that's going to elevate, that's going to elevate your live bait and put it in the strike zone of the flounder. Throw it out there. I've heard it called tight lining. Take the slack out, let it sit, let this thing sink down in the mud, let it sit there. And this guy's up here doing his thing. And now you've got a tight line with the Carolina rig. Your weight is ahead of your bait. So it, the fish has got whatever length of your leader is to mess with the fish before he pulls tension and you feel him. So if you tie a three foot leader behind an egg weight on a Carolina rig, well, there's three foot of slack. That flounder can bite it and swim forward and you're never going to feel him because he's not moving the weight. In this situation, 
anything that touches this bait is going to trigger a response from you because you're going to fill it. So that is where the dropper loop comes in so handy, guys, is giving you direct feel to your bait and then anchoring it without burying your bait in the surface, the substrate, the mud, the sand, the oyster, whatever it is. This is very, very, very helpful around the jetties, keeping it up above the rocks and keeping it in the strike zone. The fun thing about this, guys, I know this is gonna sound crazy, I know you're gonna think I'm, I'm off my rocker today, but if you take that circle hook off, and you take that favorite soft plastic, and you take that freaking JRZ quarter ounce jig head, and you do that same exact technique, guys, and you thread that guy on there the same way. Now, obviously, you typically want to do this without the plastic already on, but we're going to do it this way anyway because that's what we do. Thread him on there. Now look. Now look what we've got. We can take that soft plastic, and we can throw it out there, and we can leave it sitting like that, right? This guy's buried in the mud. Our soft plastic's elevated. And all we gotta do is just pop the rod tip. We don't have to bounce it, we don't have to work it and jig it. We can tight line it, let the current keep this guy out here, let him swim, and every now and then just bounce the rod tip and we're gonna get the action and we're gonna keep that soft plastic up out of the mud and keep it in the strike zone. Tiny, tiny, tiny little rod bounces is gonna create enough action for you. If you're fishing off the seawall, a bulkhead, or something that effect, and you're fishing straight down the side, it's a great way to not have to continually work the lure. You can throw it down that seawall in 15 foot of water over near the boat cruise shipyards uh, over in Galveston. Let that hit the bottom. Doesn't matter how deep the mud is because your lure's up here. And then you can just kind of walk down a seawall, bounce that, bounce that weight in and out. And this guy's staying up and above and he's gonna get more action imparted because he's not directly tied to your main line. I know you think I'm crazy. It works, it's a good technique. I'm not sure how common that technique is. I may have just given you a flounder hack. Heck, I don't know, guys. If y'all give that a try, that dropper loop a try with an artificial on it, y'all come back, drop me a comment, let me know it worked. Shoot me a picture and let me know how good it worked for you. All right, so we've talked about what kind of bait to throw. We've talked about how to throw artificials. We've talked about how to rig live baits. And we've talked about our favorite live baits. Like I said, next Wednesday's video, I'll teach you how to tie a tandem rig. Um, guys, these, these are very simple techniques. This time of the year, catching flounder is a very simple process. Uh, unfortunately, again, we can't keep them November and half of December. But get out there, take the kids, and y'all go catch them and enjoy it. Um, catch them before October's over. You still got two and a half weeks. You got plenty of time from now to Halloween to go out and get after them and load them up. Um, I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, again, these are just basic rigs. These are my opinion. Uh, there are guys in the business a whole lot better than me. Uh, there are definitely guys here in Galveston a whole lot better than me. But this is the way Corey and I like to do it. This is what works for us. Um, and you'll see some videos throughout October, November of us doing it. We're going to target and fish some flounder even if we can't keep them just for fun. We like catching them. Uh, we think they're a beautiful fish. I hope this helps somebody out there, guys. I hope you all enjoy the video. And uh, let's give her a go. Woo! There you have it guys, simple explanation, down and dirty on flounder fishing, a couple rigs and techniques, a couple different styles if you're an artificial guy, if you're a large live bait guy, not a large bait guy, a live bait guy, a couple different options, a way to catch these flounder, a way to target it. Texas boys and girls, I know it's, uh, it's a tough situation, we can't harvest them during the main months, but hey look guys, you know if you think about it, maybe they're just trying to increase the population, trying to help us be able to catch more in the future, help your kids be able to catch more in the future, uh, they'll get this thing all figured out and dialed in, and uh, we'll be able to fish for them again, got the rest of the month of October, get out there and hammer on them, and then right after that, they start moving back into the bays in the spring, so we'll be able to get on them guys, y'all don't get too down on it, don't, don't get too stressed out about the flannery regulations it is what it is can't do nothing about it you know anyway guys thanks for everything we appreciate y'all being here we appreciate y'all watching these videos we appreciate all the support we appreciate all the fun comments we've been getting around our fishing challenge we got coming up with the boys out east uh, we're excited to make those videos for you we'll have more information coming out soon thanks a lot guys we appreciate everything we'll see you out there Yo!